All right. Screen share, cameraman, control room. How does that sound? Echo. Let's see, do again. Um, and stream, but I think I, I still hear go. Do you, has anybody listened to Mr. E or the new guy who does transvestigation? From to John Humanity now, it's kind of like they passed a,
you would like to join, that's but I don't know if that's the link. <laughs> I guess or not, huh? We're just kind of testing. Oh, I closed out the echoing might stop. Um, let me end this. Log out and exit. Yes. Okay, my current KBPS is significantly lower than it needs to be. Um, yeah, so I was just trying to get some feedback on, well, this, first off, this is my first time doing a Google Hangout, so thanks for stopping by. It's Friday night, so I'm sure all the big heavy hitters have their own stream going on right now. I think Flat Out Elected, Candy, and Dread are currently streaming, so they have significantly better information than I do at this moment. I do have things to talk about. One thing that I am fascinated about is the uh, Asian concept, um, how Hollywood is basically all, if you're a male, you're a female, and if you're born a female, then you make yourself out to be a male later on in life and the ideas from before pubescence particularly like when you're an infant maybe is if you're born a male they'll castrate you and then you're given estrogen throughout your early childhood you into what it is that they want to kind of promote that idea and so a lot of your movie stars, particularly who run, help run Hollywood. For example, like Justin Bieber, a lot of people say that he is a female to male, transgendered entity, if you will. And that's fa that topic fascinates me because I am kind of on that tangent of a Baphomet asexual population in the future. I think that that's going to be the popular concept. And I don't have a problem with being homosexual. I don't have a you know, That's not my thing right now. Like, I am Christian, but I don't, I'm not like the West Baptist Church where I'm going to hang picket signs and tell homosexuals they're going to hell. That's just not how I would approach those people with that lifestyle. I don't think that there's any fruit to be gained from that. But I do think that there is fruit in being able to convey a message to a homosexual, male or female, that how are we to reproduce as a human race if we're all homosexual. And so that idea then goes into creating humans in a laboratory, like that fake embryonic cell type of deal that they have. That, that does fascinate me. Um, I know Richie from Boston, he had... an article like that. And if you just Google 
lamb grown in artificial womb up with that and you, you know you can take this as what you want you know this is an article whether it's credible you view whether you think it's totally up to you one article the verge will um, so the establishment is clearly paving the way comfortable with the idea of mammals growing in an artificial womb separate from its natural home really be a baby sheep should grow in a baby in a, in a female and so just comfortable with this concept then you know clearly too far fetched to do it with humans and the morals of that whoever thinks that's moral or not that is really beside the point because they're doing it and so when they're telling us about these own in laboratories they're going to use it in a way to say well this is how a health how we can grow a healthy animal but clearly they're going to put artificial nutrients in that animal like a cow for example i don't drink cow's milk anymore done too much reading and studying regarding drinking uh, another animal's milk if any milk you should be drinking it's humans but you're clearly not going to have a for you know women just hooking their you know breast up to a, a machine and have like 50 women lined up you know like a, a cattle yard you know sitting there like how they're you know back in the day they're perming their hair you know when you got five girls in the in line together and they're reading magazines in the salon and they're just kind of talking and gossiping they're gonna clearly have uh, human milk you know produced that way but my point with the whole fetus thing is that when you do have an asexual race you know our country or the earth in general and clearly that's not where we're at right now but in time as they get us used to seeing articles like this artificial womb um, it's going to allow the younger generation to accept that to be like on the matrix where everybody's grown that way and we have no more natural um, births anymore now, whether that's because of the chemtrailing that we'll have in the future, where we just won't be able to anymore because there'd be so much pestilence in the air, well, they'll have to almost make like Poly Shore biodome type of stuff. But the Baphomet concept of male female is, um, is going to become prevalent. Because the transgender agenda whether they know that or not at this moment that's that's fine that's just like people who are still globe heads and they can't wrap their head around pun intended they can't wrap their head around the flat earth concept and so for for me to say something to a, to a person who's been transgendered and i listen to john humanity's live stuff he, he'll have some um current transgendered people and i get a feeling that they regret their idea and they're you know kind of going through with the whole surgery thing john humanity has gone through it so he does have the female breast um and everything i don't know if he still has the other friend but you know he it's it's good it's good to listen to him you know, it's good to get, you know, another some some feedback on that side that even though he went through it, he still questions the, quote, movement. And I have, I said this on Facebook a couple of months ago, I still think that chemtrails 
trumps flat earth because and flat earth chemtrails are still going to pollute <laughs> whether we live on a globe or a flat earth chemtrails are still the number one problem right now for everybody and then we move on to flat earth and then we say okay well, we don't want our skies to be polluted anymore please um you know let me see here let me just go right here you know can you please stop spraying our skies um, because that's going to affect everybody and so i just want to show you guys this article um And so I hope you guys can see it. I'm screen sharing. This is my first time screen sharing. Um, but this is with the artificial womb here. Whether you want to believe this or not, you think that they were doing this, they finally, uh, quote, revealed it to us. I think that this is where they want the human race to be. with this, uh, you know, artificial womb feel. And so clearly that's the only way that an asexual race of human beings is, is going to be able to and, and try to reproduce each other. Got some snoring here. Got to add. Let's try to stop that. And um, so that's kind of where, like, I, I kind of think at Earth. But what, what is the benefit of knowing we live in a flat Earth? And what is the next step? Of, of human consciousness on earth. What's the next awakening point? Indian, I think the transgendered is gonna become uh, a few. Let me show you guys another thing here. Um, track uh, discovery. So I don't know if you've if you're familiar with uh, Star Trek Discovery, uh, the new captain, uh, a transgender. Um, in the new, there's some transgender um, concepts. That, so I hope you can see that. If you just type in Star Trek Discovery lead is transgendered, this person's name here, the female supporting role, her name is Michael. Her name is Lieutenant Michael. A lot of people, well, I don't want to say a lot of people. I'll just say the first person that I came to. Pockets full of sunshine. I think that's his name. His name is uh, Rom Romano or something. I listen to his stuff. I don't agree with everything he says. Of the whole Bill Nye propaganda, he did some stuff about Bill Nye. He came up with this video earlier today. Steal some of his uh, material. Uh, pocket pockets full of sunshine. I think. Um, attention that ironically the new captain of the ship gendered and they think that it has to do with Michael Obama played um, as the of our former president check it out Star Trek Discovery, new TV series. I don't know what channel it's on. I think it's on mainstream. 
Master or something like that. Um, so I thought that was really as if it's a Star Trek concept. Um, they're definitely keeping, you know, space a propaganda here. But think about it like this: like before we all woke up, you know, what two years ago for most people, it's been eighteen months for me since I quote woke up to flat Earth. You wouldn't even think that Star Trek now coming out again would be propaganda, but it's promoting outer space, right? Underlying story, which when Star Trek first came out, incredibly controversial, not only the homosexual agenda, but now Lieutenant Michael Burnham has a predominantly male connotation to it. Comments from Brian Fuller has led many Trekkies to believe that this character is transgender, but Star Trek is no stranger to pushing the limits of what's seen on screen. So, uh, the first interracial kiss of lesbian lovers, Star Trek continues to push the boundaries of social norms. And so they can use space and everything as a means to relaying storyline to the public. Um, and it allows people's consciousness to later become comfortable with this idea. Not bashing being homosexual or transgender, but I do question the agenda because it's just like pornography. The is you can't have a reproductive lifestyle with pornography. Healthy to have that relationship with an electronic screen and yourself. You're a male and you do still struggle with pornography. I totally understand where you're coming from. I used to, and I still do struggle with it. I haven't fallen to it in quite a while. Um, but, and that's why one of the reasons that I started doing live streams is because it gave me a hobby. It gave me something of a desire to do something that would help out my fellow humans with pornography. And you're doing it as a male and you're like, I don't mean to be graphic here, but you're touching yourself or a female are allowing yourself to become quote homosexual because you're putting your hands on the male genitalia. Right. And so you wouldn't do it to another male, you know, so guys can think, well, I would never touch another male's genitalia. Well, you're doing it to yourself. Clearly, you have no problem touching male genitalia, but it, because it's yours, it, it's different. It's able to find into thinking that pornography is okay. Um, and it's not. Um, it, it, it will not help produce. So, you know, get to that of... Um, you know, continuing the human race because everybody was addicted to pornography, we wouldn't be able to reproduce. We would just you know look at pictures all day, on because it doesn't allow you to have a relationship with a female or a male. This brings that whole relationship into just one frame of mind, and that's lust for the human flesh, satisfying yourself, and then moving on. Going back to the transgender homosexual agenda, it, it, it's kind of the same concept. You know, there's no reproduce as a human race. Anything is pornography or you're in a relationship with, with uh, the same sex as yourself. You're not going to be able to reproduce. And so when it comes to you know, fetal womb, you know, growing uh, animals in a laboratory from uh, this. I mean, look at that picture. Human being growing in that picture. 
you know, a lot of people would say, well, my baby has Down syndrome or my baby was uh, born at an infant state. And that's a lot of what they're doing with this quote study. Bring premature human babies to term outside of the uterus. And they lie. Clearly, this is a lie. This is just my opinion and my discernment. Here is where you have to start questioning but now it has only been tested on sheep. You know, the, in the establishment, and it just like I'm trying to understand God and the Bible and everything in my role here. But if you start to understand the establishment, you can start to read between the lines a little bit. And for them to even say, but right now it has only been tested on sheep, that should be a red flag for a lot of people who are awake in the awake state 20 years ahead of us. I would not be surprised if they're 30 years ahead of us in terms of technology, health, and sciences. Um, today, I don't have a problem with science. You know, I was at the dentist today. <laughs> like almost three hours I sat in the, it's been over 15 years since I've been to the dentist. And I had a cavity in my bottom right molar start to break off and I had to, I had to go in like it just became unbearable. I'll eventually, you know, have my mouth back together, but they had to give me a temporary so I can eat without having food get stuck in the crevasse of my broken tooth. And so I'm very thankful that these people learn, you know, about dentistry and the human body and stuff. And that's cool. That's science. But, you know, when you start using science to say, okay, Star Trek Discovery launching a possible transgender idea, I don't know. It's just um, where I'm at with that in regards to that uh, subject. Thing. Um, people are at their awake state in regards to flat earth, you know, because if you, if you are in an awake state and you accept flat earth, you know, uh, are you starting to understand? And, uh, um, and so that was kind of my, my, uh, my rant, I guess, just, I'm really curious as to what this whole community of flat earthers is going to go. Um, let's try to encourage people to take it to where they're working. Take it to, even today, like I was tempted to say something about flat earth with the two guys that I was working with, but then I found out that I would see them in the future. So it would give me more opportunity to, without having to, you know, openly flat earth right away you know so pick your spots pick your battles guys you know and gals you know pick your opportunities to where you if you know that you're going to talk to these people again you know maybe hang back a, a minute you know get the put the feelers out um really test the waters there's nothing wrong with waiting for that right opportunity um have it become more natural um, and some people, you know, would ask me why my name is authentic is that was a gamer tag that I had used on Call of Duty 4 is just authentic. Um, and so I used authentic intent because when people think of authenticity, they think of the real deal. Um, and if you have an authentic intent and, you're, and your heart is in the right place, and you're genuine about what you're trying to convey. If you know, as most would probably agree with this, is that, you know, this reality runs on vibration, frequencies, energy, you know. So when you speak, people have that about you. They know that about you. Um, they can trust what you're saying if you carry that with you behind closed doors. 
you know so if you're not two-faced uh, we all are, we're all two-faced we all have our work our home person how we act in front of particular friends you know you wouldn't act the same way that you act in front of your college buddies in front of your grandmother type of deal um, so I understand that but I mean as an overall general aura about you or how you go about your business um, people can especially older people uh, tell whether you're being genuine or not and I got that quite a bit from my first videos um, a lot of people thought that I was you know trolling or thought that I was not being genuine about my purpose for making videos I can only go and do my testimony I guess what I'm doing is my testimony of how how honest I want to be about what it is I'm doing and so if people can just see my line of, of work that I've put into flat earth and talking to the public my intent is genuine and I hope that it helps encourage others to be genuine about what they know because you don't have to know everything so being a flat earther at this moment right in time is you just have to know <laughs> enough to what everybody else knows right yeah I mean that makes sense right because if if you know the basics you know how far the moon is away from earth If you know how far the sun is away, even just how fast we're going, uh, curvature, you know, it's just really simple. Really simple. And you don't have to know it all. That's, the, that's really great. And so I just want to encourage everybody um, to understand that you don't have to know everything. Just know enough. You just have to know enough of what you know because if you're a flat earther i can guarantee you that you know more than a heliocentric person does better than them that just makes you more learned at this moment in time you know and that's what we're here to do is we're here to wake other people up a lot of people aren't gonna go out and research this stuff so we have to uh, bring it to them and so I think that over a period of time, our, uh, our ag you know, agenda, if you will, uh, how we carry ourselves, you know, on an individual basis. Um, I, I wrote this down a while ago, and then I was hesitant to kind of bring it up because um, I appreciate all of the flat earthers before me who had the technology technological awareness with computers and stuff to be able to live stream to come up with really good productive um, videos with good production value and just to even give us the opportunity to weigh another idea against what we're used to being taught but i do see how the establishment is able to use people whether they know it or not, to discredit flat earthers or maybe even kind of brush, give them the wrong feeling, you know, like, oh, I had a bad vibe by like watching that guy do flat earth videos. Like, what? why would I want to be a flat earther? And I feel the exact same way 10 years ago when I first became a Christian. And that was actually this 10 years ago, this spring, summer. When I kind of really felt committed, I had to, you know, separate myself from a girlfriend at the time and really had to feel like, okay, God is calling me out of that lifestyle. I need to go to this lifestyle. And I feel like that is predominant with flat earthers right now. It is a conversion. Because um, <laughs> you're, you're converting a... a a mindset like you're converting your entire worldview on you know something that the majority of the people don't would never at the time won't be able to agree with 
you know, so you have your heliocentric people and you have your flat earthers. Well, now you have your flat earthers and Christians. You have your flat earthers and people who uh, believe in a creator now, you know, whether that creator is male or female. Now you have flat earthers who believe in the female aspect of creation. And then you have your biblical creationists, you know, like your Rob Skibas, if you will. Um, and then you have your Eric Dubays, you know, who at this, in this generation would be considered the, uh, the, the prophet, if you will, of bringing enlightenment of flat earth to our attention. But that doesn't take away with what Mark Sargent gave, you know. <laughs> now, whether you want to believe Mark Sargent didn't have a hand in, you know, the first video that came out, they're hiding God with the greatest secret ever, you know, that video that has almost 2 million views. When he said, I had no idea that there was being released, you know, what, you know, hey, dude, that's cool, you know, it got out, you know, so regardless of whether you knew or not, it got out. Um, so you have your Mark Sargent's, you know, and he is totally on like the dome concept, you know, the, uh, the Truman Show idea. Um, and a lot of flat earthers can take what he says and build off of that and then come up with their own conclusions. And so flat earth is very much of a conversion point in terms of separating yourself from the crowd. And there are many prophets. There are many, quote, churches, if you will, that you can take uh, their information if you're a flat earther and you can apply it to your life and take out the bad and, you know, drink the good, if you will. And what would you say? I mean, there's, you know, you got Jaronism, um, you know, your Mark Sargents, your Patricia Steers. Um, you know, you have your disappearing act with uh, Brian Mullen. Well, you know, where did he go? Because he had given out all this great information, experiments and ideas to do experiments. Hey, we should do this. This would definitely prove. Um, and then he deleted his channel and he disappeared. And to be honest with you, when I first got into Flat Earth, I didn't know about Brian. And I've seen some of his stuff recently because people talk about him as if he is one of the prophets, you know, that of Flat Earth. You know, your major you know, 12 disciples, you know, if you will, or your major prophets of flat earth right now of this generation. And so from a Christian perspective, I guess is what I'm saying. There's many denominations right now. It is good for you on an individual basis to plant your feet. You know, if you, if you feel comfortable, you know, make a video, you know, uh, like I am doing the live stream, I'll definitely come check it out. You know, I'm not, I'm not uh, a judger of people. I definitely love to hear everybody's point of view and I can hear other people's points of view because I'm solid in my faith and I'm solid at, you know, what I believe and um, where I'm at. And a lot of people aren't going to agree with what I have to say. And sometimes I don't agree with what I'm saying either because it's just in like a thought, you know, it's like a feeling. And then you say, okay, what if I say this out loud? I probably shouldn't have said that. I don't agree with that. Um, but it is my opinion, part of me that has drawn me to that conclusion. And so with, you know, your glow busters, your dreads, your brother Sanchez's, um, they definitely get um, the black community, you know, ODD reality um he produces rap he's a white rapper he does great videos but now he's venturing out into the into the music aspect like bob to try to draw other people in and challenge their thoughts through music now um when i became a christian i listened to lecrae and actually it was like five or six years after i was a christian i started to listen to christian rap and I, and I went to my first Christian concert with uh, Lecrae, Flame, and, uh, you know, some other guy I can't remember. But I was really taken aback. I did not know that there was a concept of Christian rap. 
and I listened to it, and I really thought that they banged pretty hard. Um, and so now we have <laughs> flat earth rap, right? Anti-establishment rap. And so it's, it is not surprising that there is a, uh, I'm not trying to say religious aspect to it, but I mean, I don't, for lack of a better term, I guess, there is that religious type of aspect because there is faith that goes along with a lot of flat earth concepts because we have never been to space. Uh, we can't find the edge because we don't have enough money. Um, and we wouldn't be able to get away with it if all of us tried. Because how would we communicate with each other? You know, carrier pigeons and paper and pen? Because that would be the only way we would be able to do something under the establishment's knowledge to find the, quote, edge to send up, you know, what would we have to send up, you know? two balloons per state, you know, in different parts of the state so that then we could have, you know, a better idea of what the, just the United States looks like. And so we wouldn't, I don't, I don't think we would be able to get away with being able to, you know, having um, all these people come to, you know, pile all of our money together and then we prove the earth is flat, you know, or if this is a, a globe or something like that. Because we just wouldn't be able to get, we wouldn't be able to do it. The establishment would stop us, you know, from doing that. Um, so I hope you guys can hear me. Um, you know, don't, don't be shy. Um, I do have a link um, to join the panel if you want. I've never uh, never had anybody join my panel. I've always joined their panel. Um, so type, you know, if you want, just let me know that you can hear me. That would be cool too. But I'm um, just kind of testing this out for the first time on my own. Just I know that there's a... Uh, a lot of variety out there in terms of uh, flat earth talk and um, the different people that are out there, you know, flat out elected and dread and candy are doing live streams, you know, so I spy NASA lies. So I just kind of wanted to, you know, get my feet wet a little bit. Um, put my thoughts out there too. Um, I'd love to hear how other people became flat earthers. So, but, uh, my thing is like 18 months ago or so, I've been back in the States since late 2015. I was uh, in Thailand. I taught English for eight months in 2015 from January until August. And it was really uh, an eye opener to experience another country, especially kind of like a borderline second, third world country. There are definitely parts of Bangkok that are first world country, you know, like United States all the way, cause they love America. But I kind of came back with a totally different uh, viewpoint. It was definitely a culture shock to go there. But if you live in a country for almost a year and then you come back to America, it's it's a total culture shock. And you kind of can get an idea of, of why other countries don't particularly like America. And so I spent some time just reflecting on my experiences Um, you know, like how I perceive the world now. Um, it is, uh, uh, let's go here. I'll give you guys some, some visual here. And, and so this is just like the basic from Wikipedia, but I have an opportunity 
to go out of the country. Southeast Asia is definitely the place to go as an American. Um, yeah, Europe is cool. I've heard Australia is cool too, but they're, they're I guess the point, my point is, is the exchange rate with uh, American currency. Thai bot is great. <laughs> Cause uh, you could bring, I'm not kidding you probably 10 to $12,000 to Thailand and you could live there comfortably for a year. You know, always, you could always go, you never want to, I, I didn't really cook in, in my, uh, in my apartment too much. I would always go out to street vendors and eat their food there. But this is kind of uh, just an overall view of, of Thailand. My, uh, point of going to Thailand in the first place was actually to teach English and share the gospel of Christ through the curriculum. 9% of that country is Buddhist. And so they don't really have a concept of, of who God is you know, or anything. And so, you know, it is what it is, you know, that's what you grow up in, you know, so they wouldn't know any better. So, I do trust that God allows people to see him in their own way to draw them to himself. I know that doesn't make any sense for a lot of people who don't believe in God, but he always gives you an opportunity, whether you've heard of the gospel or not, to know who he is through your experiences. And so um, I know that he is right and just in that manner. So I don't worry about people in tribes and stuff who uh, who may or may not have heard of the gospel because I know that he will judge them on what they do know. Whether a person sees that as right or wrong, um, that's just, I think that that's how this reality was designed. And and people can you know take that for what it's worth. Um, but when I came back, um, to do, to be honest with you, um, I, I, I didn't think that my, I, I didn't think about my, quote, job <laughs> here was over, but I didn't know what type of, quote, may have here in America. And that was my biggest struggle, is I wanted to go back to Thailand because it gave my life purpose. It gave me an idea. I'm doing something for the kingdom of God that not a lot of people have an opportunity to because they want to do missions overseas, but they have a family. And so I was fortunate to have the opportunity that um, in another country. And so through, you know, I guess prayer, you know, for me, like, I don't, quote, pray on my knees in bed or anything. I don't have a prayer closet. I do talk to God a lot. He knows my heart and my desires and, and what I'm capable of doing with the knowledge and the, and the, and the uh, how do I say, trades that I have. And so one thing, uh, back up a little bit, one thing that I did experience when I was in Thailand at the very beginning was I watched the Super Bowl. Seattle Seahawks versus the New England Patriots. And so it was like right when I got there. It was, uh, you know, February. Um, and I watched um, to watch the Super Bowl. And <laughs> at the time, in regards to how fake sports are now, but when... Um, Russell Wilson did not hand the ball off at the time the best running back in football right and he threw it for an interception of all things right it's one thing to throw it incomplete and then it's fourth down and of course he handed the ball off but you have two chances to run the ball in for a touchdown oh, and if I'm not mistaken he threw the ball for an interception and I just I face Paul. 
I didn't understand the con I, di I didn't I didn't understand the logic behind throwing the ball at that point. And I, clearly, it stuck with me because I don't watch sports anymore. Um, now, whether you want to say thanks to Zachary K. Hubbard or not, you know, it's totally up to you. I don't agree with a lot of what he says, you know, because anybody can come up with what happens after an event in terms of gematria. But I did watch some of his stuff when I came back from Thailand, and this is really interesting. This may or may not be true, but I asked him, and so from that I stopped watching sports. And so once I started to wean myself away from, like, movies, TV, um, and then sports, which took up a lot of my um, thought life, just started to really open my eyes to this reality. And I was driving, right? Like, I don't obviously suggest this, but I was driving and I was flipping through, like, YouTube of, of what's going on. And it was nice out. This was early 2016, you know, like mid 20, you know, like something like that. Um, uh, when was it? I don't want to try to put words in my mouth or anything, but you know, it was early 2016 when it was starting to get nice out, you know. Um, and I saw Eric Dubay's 200 proofs and I was driving at the time. And so I was just listening to it and just kind of getting a, an audio instead of a visual. And then I rewatched it so I could like put it on my TV and listen to it and watch it at the same time and get a better understanding. Hit me. You know, like if you're Christian, then, you know, if you are married, then, you know, you know, if, if you're in love with somebody and they tell you something, chances are you're going to listen to them and investigate what they're telling you. And I felt like, I, you know, and I, I, I don't want to give Eric Dubé too much credit, you know, so I'm not going to lay, raise him up to, you know, some pedestal because he's still human. But I felt like God was talking to me through this in a way of saying, check it out, investigate it a little bit more. And I did. I started to go through Mark Sargent's stuff. I started to go on more websites. You know, not just YouTube, but more websites that would start to convey an idea, a flat earth concept. And so, on uh, Friday night, you know, whereas previous other Friday nights at this time, I'd ball because it's the playoffs you know and thank be to god that i'm not that i was i was brought out of that to you know from what i do draw more people thinking outside the box outside the globe right and just you know challenging people to uh to look into it and for a lot of people, it's easy to invest time and effort into something new like this. Um, but then again, I've had uh, a lot of, uh, you know, not a lot of welcoming um, Christians come at me, especially, uh, you know, well, what's the big deal? What's the point? Why, why should I care? Why is this a big deal? And so... It's almost like <laughs> witnessing to a Christian again about their faith. You know, so um, it is, there is a lot of faith. There's a lot of faith in the globe, too. You're taking a lot of what you read and learn and hear in school and from what people would consider themselves scientists, especially in the mainstream. You know, your Neil deGrasse Tysons and your uh, Krauss. Nice. Uh, Michio Kaku's. Um, they do sermons regularly, and I have them on my playlist right now in, in my scientism folder. 
and I've I've heard a lot of sermons. <laughs> you know, I enjoy listening to sermons. I you know when I was younger I certainly didn't, especially in the Lutheran Catholic uh, field. But there are some really good sermons out there, and so I <laughs> really started to discern between the, how scientism about physics, black holes, uh, theories, and how they present those ideas as if they were true. And ironically enough, if you listen to sermons, if, if you can, you know, handle listening to a sermon, you know, I have some sermons in my, my folder too. Um, if you can listen to those, they are also trying to prove God through scripture and experience. You know, so it is funny how I think that that part of science is a religion, um, and I don't I don't have a problem with science, you know, but I do have a problem when you meld science in with going to Mars in 2020. With that, um, let me see. This where they offer educational programs go to and uh, my state here in Minnesota you know I fall in line with the Glenn Research Center so I could call this number the uh, of you know the different teachings if you will because that's what these are is their teachings um, and sermons and literature, a belief system about outer space. Um, I don't know if people are familiar with, uh, in regards to going to space, but uh, building robotics. Um, to go land on Mars and how they plan on using those robotics to take samples that robotic to Earth and so that they can study the samples so that they can understand uh, whether there was life there not. And that's, you know, you know, evolution has never been 100% proven. That is still a religion and a, and a faith. Are allowed to teach that in schools because the schools, you know, run, run the show. So just trying to open this up. It said uh, Mars survival kit so these are the things that you would need and so that concept of traveling to outer space to another planet is something that has completely left my mind like i i do not even dwell on this concept or thought anymore um and so here's your survival guide to go to Mars, a place that we've never been to, and has never been here before. No rover has ever been here. Um, they tell us that they need to send the rover back to Earth to get proper analysis for these and the different uh, specimen samples that they have. Tell us that in our most previous. Uh, venture to Mars that they were able to do that. So it's double speak like they in the past, but then they talk about something new now as if it's possible. Oh, a number of years to go by and then we forget. You know, that's why we should never forget 9-11. We should always remind people that it was a false flag and that in, in building seven flat earthers. Now there's a lot of kids who go to college 
guys um, who may or may not know about Building 7. You know, so you always have to talk to people as if they don't know anything and ask them questions, probing questions, so that then you can get an idea of where they're at. You know, stuff like this. Make your own Mars rover. The thought they're giving a grade 6 to 12, you know, so they're giving a 15-year-old, 13-year-olds, this idea, and you and I thought the same way, right? We thought this was possible. Why would we have ever thought anything different when we were in school? You know, I graduated in 99, and when they sent that Mars rover, what was it, in like 98 or something like that? Uh, 97, maybe? Who would, why would you have ever thought different? I used to have a case like this for Texas Hold'em. <laughs> I had all my chips and my uh, uh, deck of cards in this silver type of... This when I used to play Texas Hold'em. Um, pretty good, too. Pretty fun. Um, so, yeah, I just... It's really, uh, you know, unfortunate that people, uh, you know, desire to live in this fantasy, but it was created and by us, you know, little FUBU. It's, it's very hard as a human race to this concept. We can not own the moon and we're just going to go to mars right away like our first try too like the other frustrating part is you know because america we have to do everything first time we had everything but we went to the moon flawlessly with people you know i mean they could have at least you know quote killed people the first or second time we went to make it a little bit more plausible that we would land on the moon, you know, and maybe wait until 71. We did it one time, first time, perfect. In 69. Technology, you know? Um, and so if you, even if you think that the establishment is at least 30 years ahead of us, um, could they have done that with the technology that were given thousands? You know, we didn't have touchscreen phones at 2000. I had a pager. You know, I remember having a pager that if, if somebody was, was crafty enough, could page me on their PC and give me a, a, a message on it. Say, hey, Josh, you know, I'm going to come pick you up at, you know, 315 from school. And that was just a pager, you know, but now from volcanoes to future, NASA instrument looks sky high. As wearing, they're wearing a biohazard suit on Mars. From fake Ebola. These are real articles written as non-fiction. So this stuff right here is non-fiction on Earth about going to Mars. And so, guys and gals, you know, this is the type of um, that is given to us to the kids, no doubt, you know, kids, you know, if you've seen any of my videos of me uh, being at downtown Minneapolis at the University of Minnesota, I've come across kids, you know, 19, whatever, and they look at me with utter disgust, like, what is wrong with you, dude? Like, what is wrong with you? You know, like, I don't, you know, and I have no problem, like, f taking one for the team, if you will. I don't, you know. 
I've had a problem here in the last week because I haven't been able to go out because it's been raining and, and now it's down to like 45 degrees and it's not supposed to get any nicer until like Monday or Tuesday. So the things, one of the reasons why I'm doing, you know, live Google Hangout or whatever um, is to just, I have nobody to talk to about this. You know, nobody in my circle of friends you know, wearing bio suits to simulate going to Mars. Chicanery as just blatant lies. And it's unfortunate, you know, that um, uh, people are so seated with that lie. It's very difficult for uh, comprehend. Um, and so... So, I don't know if I had it on screen share there for a second. Sorry. Um, I'm a noob. I'm a noob for today. It'll be better. But, yeah, so this is what I was talking about, if you can see it now. Screen sharing there properly. But, uh, yeah, so these are the people who are testing and whatnot on Earth in Ebola esque. Uh, garb, painting this off as real, you know, and kids believe this stuff. You know, you you can click on it. And I've told people multiple times when I do interviews with them on the street to check out NASA's website. You know, I would even go, you know, like this. I mean. Satellites in space, you know. I would go here like a couple of weeks ago after I've done the whole satellite in space and challenging. Do what I'm doing, right? Satellites in space, Google image. All you'll get are CGI images of satellites in space. Some views. So it's almost like I have to go because there's a part of me because, you know, growing up in this reality, we all have it on really like there are really no satellites. They're all CGI. You got to go here and you just got to like, reconfirm like why it is that we're fighting so hard, you know, this. Like that, what is that? What was that? Western Michigan? You know, want to put a satellite in space? You're not going to... In... Or WMUK. Okay, so it's probably... In that. Yeah, it is Western Michigan University. Before, but... Rendering of Montana State University Explorer 1 CubeSat. So I have to go, I you know, and I go here just to double check myself, you know, because I'm like, go out to the public the message that all this is, you know, and even if you get to this point here, that's still bad on the background looks, but a picture of the satellite in such a steady fashion. Wants to launch 4,400 satellites into space. Super fast internet to the world. Well, to I cite most of my uh, videos. I stopped doing this prove 
prove um, that I could still provide information and, and without citing this news article right here, undersea cables, 99% of all communication is done internationally under undersea. And so a little bit, a little bit, I got called out. I got called out out by an agent or a bot on one of my videos and I had to address it what they say hey, this in regards to undersea cables and fiber optics faster than satellite transmissions by up to eight fold that includes internet usage okay so let's go back to the SpaceX article X wants to launch 440 for hundreds, okay? Super fast internet to the world. Well, how are they going to bring super fast internet to the world? The article right here tells us that are eight times faster. It's in. You see what I'm saying? I didn't even know about this SpaceX article. I just clicked on it, and so, you know, totally. I try to do everything unplanned so I can have city to it, thus the channel name. Um, even right here, times more than what we currently have at 50, almost 1,500, right? 420 almost. No coincidence there. Currently in space, 300. So if you type in, you know, uh, satellites, how many satellites do we have in space? You get different um, uh, let's see here. How many satellites in space? Okay, so there we go. How many satellites? 2,200. It was actually updated because I remember it saying 2311 or something like that. It says 2271. 1419. So what is it? You know? And then when they tell us that fiber optics are eight times faster than satellites, how is what is SpaceX point? How are they going to do this? You know, they can't. That's why. So that's what I hit kids with. Um, you know, clearly, I wish I had more material. I, I do have other ideas and whatnot to draw the attention of the young minds out there. But when I just say satellites don't exist, Steve notion that they exist isn't even an afterthought like ought to go down this bunny trail so taking a picture of this satellite here how is it able to be so perfect you know, in my opinion this might be a made satellite on the ground like the one I show by Bill Nye and after some Kharkov vodka, they put this together on the on the ground, and then they green screen the back. Just in high, they, they take a picture of the satellite in high definition in the background, and then Photoshop the ground. You know, so and this is a, a realistic height too. This is probably what five, six, seven miles, you know, maybe what, 40,000 feet, but that's not low earth orbit at all. That's, that's still in our atmosphere. Like you still need uh, something to propel through space, through the sky, right? So that's how airplanes move is they use the 
them to push off. They suck in the air and they push it off, and that's how they're able to travel. And so right there, you know, we're just... How many satellites do we have? Well, and then it goes back to Star Trek. They keep this idea fresh. Whether this is going to be a good show or not, that's besides the point. You know, the idea making a new Star Trek, like Star Trek, which is all going to be CGI, CGI to, you know, make us believe this. This is how many satellites there are. I, I, I would encourage you guys to challenge people with the ISS live stream. Because says live stream, you don't see this. Bees hovering over their beehive after you just kicked it. Well, rock at it. You know, you don't see this. Well, there's no satellites because space is so big. The Earth is so big. Okay, well, I'll give you that. Five minutes ago, uh, in the sky, right? So you can see it from the ground. You can see him hovering and going over. But then when you watch the ISS live stream and you don't see any, all of a sudden the Earth is too big. <laughs> so, so you're able to corner them into what they just said, but they can't process it yet some time to process what they just said and you have to be quick park and say no how can that be true because you have to call them out you know on uh on what they think that they know like satellites you know You know, I'm just, I'm just trying to, I don't even, you know, I don't even know what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to encourage you, um, if if you are a flat earther, to just, and I'm sure you do understand, you know, Earth from space, boom. The flip is this, you know. Okay, what is that? You know, and that may or may not be real, but. I mean, look at that. How is how is this it's just this is, looking at these pictures make me feel uncomfortable. This guy right here? Okay, this may or may not be real. This, you know. Now clouds have a 3D proponent to them like this. Don't see clouds. This uh, to them. So. This, what is that? This is so blatantly CGI. It still allows a person's mind to experience, even though it's all fake. And so.
I hope the audio is better. I just tried to stream earlier today through this uh, plugin that I got. It was very echoey, X Split Broadcaster. Um, so it was very echoey, and I've never done the gone the Google Hangouts route, and I don't know if the chat is working or not because there was some live chat going on in the previous thing, but I haven't seen anybody type anything, so I don't know if the live chat is working. Um, maybe I have to open up the YouTube live stream to see that. But yeah, this is kind of just a ten idea of kind of how this works and what's out there. Oh, there is chat going on here. Okay, so you guys, you guys have been here. Okay. Hey, Elliot. It didn't cross my mind to come here. Sorry, guys. Um, I didn't know I had to open up another to. So, rookie mistake on my part. Um, Um, yeah, uh, throw some wrenches out there. Um, hopefully you all are still here. Um, yeah, so I've been going on something well, just trying to get a feeling for the live streams and kind of what's out there kind of to promote my channel too um, I'd like to get back out there and go uh, it's been raining and cold here using the time just to kind of collect my thoughts and understand uh, I like to listen, but I need to I turn to talk instead of uh, so hope my uh, stream is going well. I know this might be a while back days go by but you need a thousand subs to use your mobile phone to go live give me an option on my phone to can create a file and i can like you know do a a youtube video but then i gotta upload it and um Cool, great. Um, I know this is a while back, but good to hear that the audio is good. Um, yeah. Uh, new Aliens movie, it does have some transgender connotations to it also. I think there's a part where the guy kisses himself. Makes a whole lot of sense. Hey, Elliot, thanks for stopping by. Kind of getting the uh, idea here. I got a comment here from Raven Wolf on one of my videos. Josh, I agree with you totally. I'm so tired of the lies, the hoaxes, the fakery, and living amongst zombies. It hear it all and wonder why I signed up for this sometimes. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Let me, uh, you have a, a link. I'll give you a mod, I'll, I'll give you a wrench, and then you can think. Love to check it out. I'd love to get some different ways to approach. Mm. Or about the truth. Truth in comes with saying lies about satellites are CGI. Earth evidence. Okay. All right. Well, days left. I'll check this out. Open this in the D tab. What do you think this uh, Titanic conspiracy? You know, I have never uh, ventured into a conspiracy, but I I am aware that <laughs> if anything, the Titanic was purposely sank, and everybody on that who may or may not have really been on it, right, on it for a reason, almost in a way to kind of, uh, you know, if you want to get rid of your competition, the easiest way to do it is to kill them off, right? You know, put them all in this, uh, and, you know, I say it, I don't say this in, in a mean way, I, and I brought this up a while back, I think that I brought this up on my Comic-Con weekend, that I'm just saying be, if you're going to convention and rally the second week of November, there's going to, you know, there's going to be a lot of, uh, be a lot of people there who, uh, you know, are, are, are quote famous. A lot of people like, you know, just normal people who watch and spend hours and hours of time listening to these people, their viewpoint on when giving us evidence to prove that, you know, be careful, you know, like I said before, you know, if you're, if you're going to a rock concert, you know, or whatever, you know, you never want to put keys, your money, you know, things that you, your phone are all in one spot. You know, put your put your phone in your pocket, another pocket. Or, you know, leave the leave the stuff something behind. But it's just a tactical don't put all your eggs in one basket because, you know, the fox might come in to the hen house. You know, if all your eggs are, you know, then you're back to square one. And so I just, I just encourage people to be safe, you know, I, I, I believe it will go off without a hitch. I don't think that there'll be any drama, but there's a lot of people. There's a lot of, of really influential people in the, the flight to be there. So I would encourage you guys to, to be careful out there that's really all i can say and I, and I pray that everything goes off without a hitch and it gives a new revival to this idea and movement what are we going to do after the after the convention can go so i just, i say that i'd like to go um, but i don't think i can go i just don't have the finances at this moment right now and i don't see myself getting them uh you know even by early October oh, but, but um, what what then you know Comic Con you know instead of man and Batman you know we're bringing tables with uh, flat earth maps on them and stuff you know so I just I don't know I, I'm curious to know what people's ideas are what are we going to do where are we going to go from there
going to start taking it to the streets? Are we going to start rising up a little bit more? Are we going to get a collective of people at a local state capitol in March, like they did at my state capitol? There were 10,000 people at my state capitol in downtown St. Paul, Minnesota. Scientism. I can't agree with that. I can't. I can't. I went there and I boldly, literally against the grain, because everybody was walking towards and that said, and on the moon, we'd have a McDonald's on it by now. And it was very basic. You know, get them to snicker a little bit. But you know what? And on the moon, though. It's, I just, I, I would like what anybody thinks is going to happen by this time next year. Clearly, there, there's some alternative ideas about something happening on June 10th and August, what, 21st. You know, form, form uh, um, uh, your government buildings and, and just, we need to start demanding answers. You know, we can't be passive. There's a lot of passive people here in Minnesota. A lot of pa passive Christians. A lot of Christians don't mind being walked on. The lamb mentality, you know, the victimization. By any means, that type of Christian. I think time once people get to know me... Um, I am definitely uh, set apart from most Christians. I've been waiting for something to happen for a long time, too. I think that 9-11, that, that feeling, that wave, you know, 15, 16 years ago, is is starting to come again. So if Flat Earth, per se, is the tipping point, you know, the, the straw that's going to... the the hurricanes and the tidal wave that's supposed to come on the east or west coast that with um to project a planet project planet x or nibiru in the sky um you know go from there freak everybody out i don't know if you guys are aware of this website here um, I'll show you guys this website. I used to be really into this website back in the day when, uh, especially with NASA, right? Because he does some really cool stuff. So I'll do some uh, shameless promoting for him. Let me just see here. And for something to happen to, um, I certainly got caught up in the whole election thing. And uh, I certainly thought that it was going to take a done bar for all of us, right? And uh, I still had around uh, in my mind, but uh, okay, I'll, I'll uh, show you guys what I'm looking at here. Okay, so there's this website called Digital Blasphemy. It's got great planetscapes and uh, wallpapers that you can get. I th think it's going to be something like this. Let's see um, what I'm... Can you guys see my screen here? Show me screen. Give you an idea of what my thought process about what they project in the sky.
Oh, something like this. You know, simple planet type of deal. Um, horizon could be anywhere. Act multiple planets. Hmm. Bearing nobody could see. I don't know if you guys have to go into my the Google Hangout or what maybe i could do that that might help rookie rookie here doing yeah okay maybe this might work Being a rookie here, guys. All right. He was in the Google Hangout with me. So. link if you want to join I don't know how to put my uh in. but Let me just do this here so I can with what I'm trying to express here and, and that, you know, may or may not happen. I mean, this is just completely, you know, we're like scientists. We're just going on a, D, a DMT trip, right? Theorizing. That's what a theoretical physicist is. They just theorize right that's what, what we can do so we're allowed to do that and that's you know my opinion i don't know if this will happen or not but blasphemy they have some he has some really good uh, i've been into his stuff for I think I even have a subscription to his stuff. That's kind of like, like an idea of what I was thinking in regards to uh, something in the sky so that people would believe the concept. Um, well, of course, you know, uh, of course everybody's going to fall in line with it. an idea and he has different um savers of planets and various other spacey concepts and so if you kind of just 
even if you have a website of your own that you you like about space when you understand how cgi it is i think it can kind of give you an idea of of why they are being the idea 8k resolution they want our eyes to get used to that uh, type of resolution Just trying to, uh, you know, hit all the facets. Um, so, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know if anybody else has anything to say. I went on the um, the Morgyle and um, I like John and, and uh, how he conveys his his thoughts and stuff. So I think I've been on his show the last two times. He offered out his phone number to call. When I went on there, I was pretty passionate about trying to just wake people up and whatnot but this time i just i really wanted to know his opinion about outer space and whether it was uh ability or, or not uh, that's the idea that's out there right now is water is space space is water the guinness beer commercial predictive programming in regards to that that's about you know flying through the firmament into water Whether that's true or not you know it's certainly up to debate but there are some interesting uh, videos about what ours could be that they uh just energies of light in water and the vibration and frequency of those um, revealing, you know, because you can simulate a lot of that stuff here on Earth, and then you try to do it in water, and it's, uh, in my opinion, I think it's interesting at the beginning in, in Genesis 1 that God hovered over the waters. So it was that above the firmament so it's it's fascinating thought but <laughs> So I think I kind of got the hang of, the only thing I'd like to do is like, I green sharing. That's one, something I'd like to try to I go. Green share my entire screen. Share. Um, I wish I was sharing these articles at the beginning, and <laughs> if uh, nobody saw them, you are now screen sharing. Okay. Here it doesn't show. Sharing. 
Just let me see something. It seems like I was, I saw that. watching I'm just trying to do some troubleshooting on green share I'm a noob so and when I try to screen share it doesn't show up on the Trying not to be a noob next time. The mute stream. That's why I was getting uh, echoes. So be different if I mute. Go on uh, YouTube. It's the only thing I'm having trouble with right now is in Google Hangouts. I uh, I thought I was screen sharing at the beginning about Star Trek and the fake womb. So now I'm just trying to figure out how to screen share properly. Because it says that I'm screen sharing.
check. All right. Well, it's new to me. So right now I'm just kind of trying to troubleshoot. I don't... It's to say unless somebody wants to bring something up, but I'm just trying to screen share. Thing. So... Displaying these websites, assuming people were screen sharing. Screen share. This does anything. That does infinitely. So that's amazing. So it screen shares that won't let, let me just screen share my screen. Oh, it doesn't. Hmm. Present. You want. <laughs> If I could do that. No, I don't want to. Hmm. Yeah, so if you're still, if you are watching this later, I don't 
really have a whole lot to say. I'm just streaming live right now because I'm trying to do some troubleshooting on how to... So that could be an option for later. Just help create a different atmosphere. So if I don't much to say for some websites and create some content. So I could just uh, stream now and then um, just have to and start something up maybe tomorrow. Everybody stopping by and say, unfortunately, I thought I was screen sharing earlier, um, but you heard what I said. You can definitely research those things and look that stuff up on your own time. S streaming, and then I'll, maybe I'll just go to private or something so I can try to figure out how to screen share. Appreciate everybody. Subscribe on my videos if you like and like share and subscribe and you know try to get the word out on other flat earth videos too community effort here and we got to just continue to move forward we can't uh, allow the detractors to take over keep up the work ladies and gents and i'll talk to you soon